President Trump raising the stakes in the standoff over building the border wall during day 13 of the government shutdown. The president appearing in the White House press briefing room surrounded by immigration and law enforcement officials to say he's not backing down. We need protection in our country. We're going to make it good. Uh, the people of our country want it. I have never had so much support as I have in the last week over my stance for border security, for border control, and for, frankly, the wall or the barrier. I have never had anything like it in terms of calls coming in, in terms of people writing in and tweeting and doing whatever they have to do. I've never had this much support. Those same officials supporting the president's call for more border security. Anywhere that you look where we have built walls, they have worked. They have been an absolute necessity for Border Patrol agents in securing the border. You all got to ask yourself this question. If I come to your home, do you want me to knock on the front door or do you want me to climb through that window? These criminal aliens that have been released from jail, that have been deported, will come right back into the United States. However, if we had a physical barrier, if we had a wall, we will be able to stop that. This stalemate over money for the border wall set to intensify with Democrats retaking control of the House. Nancy Pelosi is promising to put pressure on President Trump and Republicans after reclaiming the gavel and the speakership just hours ago. Pelosi is also insisting she's not budging on coughing up money for the wall. Are you willing to come up and give him some of this money for the wall? Because no. apparently that's the sticking no. point. No, nothing for the wall. We're talking about border security. There is no amount of persuasion he can do to say to us, we want you to do something that is not effective, that costs billions of dollars. All this comes as President Trump invites congressional leaders back to the White House tomorrow for more shutdown talks after a contentious briefing on border security yesterday. All right, so, Dan, on a day when all the attention was on Nancy Pelosi, yeah. Speaker Pelosi, Thank big you. ceremony and all the nightly newscasts were going to leave with that, the president comes in at the end of the day and holds this big press briefing surrounded by ICE agents and Border Patrol agents and kind of stole her thunder a little bit. Yep. And I thought that was pretty effective. Did you? It is. I think the GOP's generally had a problem over the last few decades, not with the message, but with messaging. I mean, the general idea of low taxes, border security, health care, freedom and choice resonates with the majority of Americans. The problem is our messaging is terrible. We never manage to fit things on a Wheaties box. In other words, everything we go to like a methadone clinic and we're talking about 401ks and the Laffer curve. Mm -hmm. We've never been able to say it as easily as Trump. This is about border security. That's his message right now. It's, it's clear. He has, he's a master at taking over the microphone, and he just did it again in this press conference. I think it was a brilliant idea. Come out, be snappy, get off the stage. And it's a nice response to Speaker Pelosi, who's been saying for almost a year, walls don't work. And you have people on the border, experts, who've done this their whole lives, saying everywhere we've put a barrier, they've stopped illegal immigration. And you have other experts who say we don't need the kind of wall that Donald Trump's talking about. We need something in the middle. Who's that? So there's a whole list of them. Can you name one? Will Hurd, who is a former CIA officer, congressman from Texas, the CIA on the border. Guy? On the border. I trust these guys because they're down there <laughs> on the He is a lines. Republican member of Congress from Texas who says it's the most costly, least effective way to do border security. So there is a difference of I opinion. don't believe that at all. Okay, well, it's true. Um, and the CIA, but, don't come after me. But here's, here's what, so Donald Trump didn't hold a press conference. He didn't take any questions. So let's just. I let's, thought that was smart. Let's because call sometimes it what it is. he takes questions like, and then he steps on the message. That's true. So two, two points, though, on this. First, you've had the first Republican senator today, Cory Gardner from Colorado, come out and say the government should reopen with no wall funding. There are senators on the Republican side who are vulnerable here who may decide that they will vote for something the House passes with no wall funding. This is a numbers game for the president at this point. The other point I would make is that a lot of people in cable punditry, including myself, have started talking about this DACA for wall funding swap. My question is, is that even being talked about inside the negotiating room? Because you don't hear about it from Trump or the White House. You don't hear about it from Pelosi. They're each sort of in their own corners. We're all talking about a possible compromise here, but are they? Well, we know something right? they that should be was happening not. inside the negotiating room the other day. I think Kirsten Nielsen, Department of Homeland Security Secretary, started talking about the facts and figures on the border, and Chuck and Nancy just cut her off. Yeah. I thought that was really mean. Yeah, uh, according to <laughs> one White House source, uh, 
uh, Chuck, Lena and Nancy, you should interrupt her. Right. And uh, because she was she was presenting data and, and facts and, and she was presenting her case. And then Speaker Pelosi comes out and says the president is allergic to data and facts. True. So, you know, clearly this is an allergy or an affliction that is spreading to both parties. And that's why we're at an impasse. I also don't hear Nancy Pelosi talking about what the House can do in terms of immigration because everyone is hung up on the wall. They're hung up on that four letter word and they can't get past it. Meanwhile, you have a bunch of people who aren't collecting paychecks, yeah. others who, uh, who aren't going to work, and those who are caught in the middle trying to work in this country. But uh, by some, they are being demonized. And, and my question for Dan is, what if the wall doesn't work? Because really, the, the greatest correlation between immigration in this country yeah. and when it proliferates is when the economy is doing really well. But, right now, the economy is doing really well. You also have a lot of illegal immigration. Yeah, but you generally believe in facts and data, right? How do you love explain the fact so much. that there is a, a, a significant correlation between construction of walls and the decreasing in illegal immigration traffic and drug trafficking, where there, in fact, is a wall in place? How would you explain that any other well, way? And, and, you know, the president actually just went to Instagram and I think released a meme. The wall is coming. Oh, is that real? my God. That is from Game of Thrones. Nice. This nice. is embarrassing. That's fresh on the gram. Let's go to Greg for the big picture. Greg, I know you've been watching this all day. And that is a big picture. <laughs> that is a big picture. Uh, uh, you know, it's, I, I look at it from the... Okay. As part of the media, we are living in Donald Trump's restaurant, right? Because around 4.30... He says, you know, you know, there's not enough Trump on your pizza. There's not enough Trump in your soup. So he leaves the kitchen and he comes out and puts more Trump on your plate, which is what he did at 430, which helps galvanize the media. And then everybody reacts, responds. But here's what I, I want to think about. The real threat to security is a, a rhetorical device, conflation. OK, if you think about the four areas of security, border, terror, crime, and let's say home, owner, uh, home protection guns, okay? Those are the four areas. In each one of those cases, there's the device that is used to prevent any kind of improvements in that area is conflation. If you look at immigration, conflate illegal immigration with legal immigration, yeah. you can't get a wall. With terror, if you conflate religion with extremism, you get Islamophobia. That prevents any movement in, in the anti-terror world. If you look at uh, policing, you conflate law and order with racism, right? Police brutality, uh, uh, police shootings. And then when you look at the Second Amendment, you conflate gun crime with actually gun ownership. So this is a tactic used by, tactic used by the left that is in, effective in every area of security. And, it, and it's probably most glaring here because we see that they both agree on the same thing. They both want border protection, but one won't budge because they're conflating it with bigotry. It's like, oh, you want a wall? You don't like you don't like brown people. That's what it is. You don't like the people from Dallas. It's like it's like no. Actually, if you ask if you ask Hispanics here, they would actually agree that they believe in security too. But that conflation is what is destroying every debate. That's you, my big picture. You, you say though that the Democrats and the Republicans agree they both want border security. I'm not so sure the Democrats want 100 percent. Okay, we security. have proof. We have proof. We have we, them saying we it. Do. That's, that's Just because question. they say it doesn't make no, but, it but true. No, but that's that's my question, and I want someone to pose that to Chuck Schumer. Why was that okay right. in 2006, but it's not okay now? Why were you Trump. okay uh, designating 46 billion dollars right. for the kind of border security that everyone is talking about 12 or 13 years ago? now, but you're not okay with what has changed. Well, if you're a reporter on Capitol Hill, take that question from Kennedy and then ask Cron Chuck Schumer. Wait, maybe what? we can get an answer and then we can find out the truth. But we got to run. All right. I was just going to say, what has changed from the Senate bill that passed 100 to nothing under the last Congress that had no wall funding?